Next group of special tests that we're going to be doing is for posterior rotary uh, instability. The first special test that we're going to do is called the Houston posterior medial or posterior lateral drawer test. Uh, for this one what we're going to do is we're going to have the uh, patient in a supine position uh, with their uh, legs extended and uh, what the athletic trainer is going to do is we are going to uh, flex the hip about 45 degrees and the knee is going to be flexed uh, 90 degrees. Um, and then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, internally uh, rotate uh, the tibia uh, and then we're going to sit on the foot and then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, apply uh, posterior with our hands on the proximal tibia. We're going to push push posterior or downward, uh, feeling for any uh, instability or uh, pain. Uh, we, if we uh, internally rotate the tibia uh, and foot, uh, this is to assess the, the anterior medial, medial rotary structures. Uh, if we uh, laterally rotate the foot, uh, and again, grabs the proximal tibia and push posteriorly. Uh, with uh, external rotation of the foot, this is testing our ALRI, A L R I, uh, structures. And again, uh, we're looking for if the tibia uh, moves uh, posteriorly uh, on the medial or lateral aspect of the knee. The next special test that we're going to be doing is called the Jacob test. It's also referred to as the reverse pivot shift maneuver. And for this one, we're going to have the patient in a supine position uh, with their uh, hip and knee extended starting out. And um, the athletic trainer is going to stand a lateral on the side of the table and their knee. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grasp their uh, foot with one hand and then the other uh, hand is going to be uh, on the lateral, posterior lateral side of the knee. Uh, my thumb can be uh, just anterior or, or over the um, femoral head or fibular head excuse me and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, flex the hip up to about uh, 45 degrees 40 to 50 degrees of uh, flexion knee flexion and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply uh, externally rotate the tibia uh, with my uh, hand on my foot and then I'm going to apply a valgus stress at the at the knee uh, while maintaining that external rotation uh, with my at the foot and tibia and then what I'm going to be doing uh, is I'm going to slowly or as the patient's lateral tibial plateau will sublux posteriorly um, or it'll also uh, but it then it reduces in full extension or at about 20 degrees of flexion. Um, when the sublux occurs, there's usually a clunk or a shift um, around 20 or 30 degrees. Uh, if this happens, this is a positive sign for a uh, posterior cruciate ligament, uh, lateral collateral ligament, or posterior lateral capsule. Next special test that we're going to do is called the external rotation recurvatum test. Uh, for this one we're going to have the patient supine uh, on the table uh, with their hips and knees extended uh, and then we're also going to, uh, the athletic trainer is going to stand uh, down by the feet and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm gonna, I can either grab um, both of the uh, great toes or the uh, midfoots for both feet and then what I'm going to do is, uh, while the patient is relaxed, uh, uh, I'm going to lift the, both legs uh, off the table vertically, uh, about 12 inches. And what I'm looking for, I'm uh, observing the bilateral alignment of uh, both knees uh, and uh, if, the, if there's any uh, increase in the hyperextension 
or uh, external tibial rotation or varus alignment, then that would be a positive sign for the allery structures for the PCL sprain or or anything else in the anterior lateral rotary uh, instability structures. That's it. The next special test that we're going to do is called the dial test. It's also called the tibial external rotation test. And for this one, the patient is going to be in a prone position on, a, on the table with the, their knees uh, flexed at about uh, 30 degrees, uh, both knees, and then the ankles are going to be in a, a neutral position. And uh, neutral in uh, plantar flexion and inversion or uh, eversion. Uh, and then um, what we're going to, the athletic trainer is going to, uh, is going to be uh, down here by the feet, uh, stay holding on to it in this position, uh, grasping the, the uh, medial border of uh, both feet to kind of use as a reference point. And while uh, both knees are together uh, uh, and maintaining uh, this uh, 30 degrees of flexion, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we are going to uh, forcefully uh, externally rotate uh, both, both legs uh, and we're going to compare both sides uh, at 30 degrees and then we're also going to compare it at uh, uh, 90 degrees of knee flexion. So 90 degrees and 30 degrees of knee flexion, comparing uh, both knees. Uh, and what we're looking for for this one is if there is a increase in greater than 10 degrees of external rotation compared bilaterally. Uh, if there's a difference at, at 30 degrees but not at 90 degrees, then that wouldn't be positive for a posterior lateral uh, corner of the knee. If there's a difference in th at the 30 degrees and the 90 degrees of flexion, then that would be positive for a posterior cruciate ligament um, as well as the posterior lateral uh, knee structures. Then if the, uh, there's only difference at 90 degrees and, and not at 30 degrees, then that would be isolating the posterior cruciate ligament sprain. That's it. The athletic trainer or therapist is going to uh, sit on their uh, foot and um, but before we do that what we're going to do is we are going to um, uh, internally uh, rotate the foot and then uh, put our foot on it to stabilize it and then um, our hands are going to go on the proximal, both hands can be placed on the uh, proximal tibia. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be applying a, a dwarf test or pushing downward or posteriorly on the tibia uh, to see if there's any uh, end feel or a posterior displacement of the tibia on the femur uh, with the uh, uh, toes right now are uh, internally rotated, the foot. So for this one, uh, what we're uh, assessing for is our... Um, Uh, medial structures, posterior medial structures, and then if we uh, externally rotate the foot, and again uh, place our, our body weight on it, uh, applying a posterior translation of the tibia on the femur, then we're assessing the uh, posterior lateral uh, structures at the knee, um, or the PCL sprains. Special test that we're going to be doing is called the reversed pivot shift. For this one, we're going to have the patient in a supine position, starting off with their uh, leg and knee extended. Uh, the athletic trainer is going to stand uh, down on the, on the side of the involved foot. Uh, one hand is going to be on the, the lateral knee, and uh, like the normal pivot shift, the other foot is going to uh, grasp the, the midfoot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to flex and uh, externally rotate the tibia uh, while we uh, 
passively extend it. Uh, so we're going up from, uh, we're flexing, flexing the knee uh, while we're applying the uh, valgus force. And we're going from flexion down to extension while we're maintaining the external rotation of the tibia and applying the valgus force at the, the knee joint. And what we're looking for is a redu reduction or a clunk in the tibia, uh, uh, usually indication for uh, posterior lateral rotary instability and or posterior lateral uh, corner trauma. The next special test that we're going to be doing is called the dynamic posterior shift test. For this one we're going to have the patient in a supine position. The athletic trainer or therapist is going to stand on the side of them, um, the involved side. And what we're going to be doing is we are going to passively flex the hip and knee to 90 degrees, so it's at 90 and 90. Uh, while we're supporting it here, uh, we can also uh, palpate around this area. Or, um, what we're going to be doing from this point is we're going to pass, ask them to relax. We're going to passively extend the knee. Um, and then as we're doing that, we are uh, feeling or uh, listening for a clunk or a jerk uh, as it gets near uh, full extension um, or thus reducing the uh, femur, um, the tibia on the femur. And this would be a positive indication for a posterior lateral rotary instability structures. That's it.